Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are connecting to Maxi Signani. Hola, Hello. Maxi. Hello. Hola, ¿cómo estás? How are Welcome. you? We're good, good. Chilling here. All cool. How are you? Thank you for I'm all this. Uh, for you, I may, and for American Society to do this, to do your interview to artists. And so I'm very grateful to, to be part of this, these collections of, of interviews. So thank you. Thank you, you so much. much. Now, thanks to you for joining us. We're super happy to have you today um, to talk a little bit about your work. We're going to be doing this talk a little bit in English, and we might switch to Spanglish or Spanish in spirit of the atmospheric relations that shape our organization. Um, but um, Maxi has lived in New York for some time. I don't know if you want to tell people a little bit about your personal um, tour starting with you being born and raised in La Paz, true? La Paz, yes. Uh, well, so, yeah, well, my name is Maximiliano Signani. Um, I was born in La Paz, Bolivia. Uh, I studied architecture here in the Universidad Mayor San Andres. Then I moved to New York and I finished my studies in fine arts at the School of Visual Arts in 2014. Uh, since then, uh, with a couple of friends, you know, like uh, we managed to have a studio, to do some practice in Brooklyn, and then like eventually uh, with some friends, uh, we opened a, a joint underground gallery Lower East Side where we were doing some 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 stuff, inviting artists and curators mm -hmm. to do things there. And then I moved to Italy um, eventually because of all these situations in the uh, USA, and well, uh, I, I got a son, and it was very complicated to raise in a son in in the city. And then, like, uh, currently I'm doing the um, Stedel Schule at uh, Frankfurt, Germany, where I'm in the art program doing the, in, the film, in, the film, in the film department. So, yeah, that's for now. That is amazing. And, Maxi, I know, but let's share with the audience that you're right now in La Paz. You, were, you went there to visit family, and you're also doing uh, an artwork, which we're going to be discussing. Exactly. Yeah, I'm right now in La Paz, Bolivia, yes. Um, for how long have you been there? What? In Altiplano, the highest city in the world. <laughs> the highest city in the world, yeah, yeah. And one of the most spectacular yeah. ones. I don't know if people who are watching us have had the chance to go there, but it's a truly spectacular and unique place. I highly recommend it whenever it's possible yeah. to travel again. <laughs> it is, it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm here while visiting family, of course, like, you know, these um, moments of COVID also is very important to be very close with the ones that we are mm -hmm. very close by, you know, and then like, um, well, I, I've been uh, well, called to do uh, a sculpture, like to do in, uh, in the forest, in the jungle of, in La Paz, we call it uh, Los Yungas, so I don't know if we can just talk about that trade or like, if mm -hmm. you want to kind of get some... Uh, ideas of like what I've been working on right now. The thing is like um, I've been um, I've been very interested to to work with rocks, like with different types of rocks in terms of like finding them. Like I have like certain sense of like the rocks, they talk to you, you know, there's some kind of very interesting aspect on that and then like the fact that like how they find them, how do you find them and then how you can like mm -hmm. build them, you know, to to build things, um, to create whatever you, you want. So like in the very, this very first one, it was like my first mm -hmm. apacheta. So just to give a context to everybody, apacheta is, um, is a construction of, of, of a pile of rocks where it was like created by the um, indigenous communities here in Bolivia, the Aymaras specifically, uh, where it was like, a, uh, it's like meant to be an offer to Pachamama. Pachamama is the mother earth in Aymara. Uh, but uh, the main uh, function is uh, for the travelers to find these this apachetas and to rest, you know, to lay down and also to find some, some things like food, uh, sticks, um, coca leaves, uh, different types of things you can find in the Altiplano, tons of this. And also it's very interesting because also you can understand it's like some communities living uh, mm -hmm. uh, close by this these structures, you know? So that was the, the very first one What I, uh, this is the second one <coughs> that I did in Italy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in a residency that I did in, uh, 
place called the Casa, Casa del Forno. Uh, where again, like, I found these uh, rocks and then I started to paint them with a specific, um, it's a small Italiano because just I wanted to have this uh, color to stay like longer and not having like certain like pro uh, uh, problems to, to, for, the, for the painting itself to disappear, you know? <laughs> and you can mm -hmm. still find these things in uh, Rora, it's like a one hour uh, by car in, uh, from Turin, from Torino, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me find we're having some technical issues, so we're not seeing me, but that's not so relevant because the important thing is the artwork. I hope that everybody can hear though. Uh, but basically, um, I don't know if you want to, you know, you were talking about the, oh, and before I go in depth about this project, um, I don't want to invite anybody seeing, I'm seeing a lot of friends here uh, talking. Uh, Hello, Carla. Hello, Nicole. Hello, everybody. If you have any questions, please send them in the chat or in the question section. And we will be, I will be moderating them and responding all of them. So going back to the idea of the pacheta, I don't know if you want to reiterate what it means for, you know, for Brilliant Culture. And I'm going to be switching in between different images. These are all like previous pachetas that you did, right? Exactly. So like... <clears throat> Like I'm counting them, like this is the third apacheta. So again, like just for the new people are like joining. It's like a, it's an offer that was meant to do for Pachamama Mother Earth for the traveler to rest when they find these apachetas in the, in the altiplano. No? This specific mm -hmm. apacheta is the number third. Uh, I got a mention honor of a very, the most important contest in Bolivia called the Salon Pedro Mimo Murillo. It was uh, mm -hmm. two years ago, and it's a, it's a very important contest that uh, we all say here in Bolivian artists, like, you have to participate, you have to be part of, of this uh, community, because it's the, long, it's the oldest one, and also it's the one that you can activate these, these things, and it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm going to keep showing different ones, I don't know, so you is, stop. <laughs> this another one, it's a very small one, this is like a like like private like mine, it's uh, it's like the rocks that I brought from uh, my my family came, uh, came from a little town it's called by the Titicaca Lake it's called Carabuco and very close by there's a mountain called the Dragon Dormido the Sleeping Dragon and then the those rocks they they have something like that mountain is something like I have certain beliefs that perhaps back in time they were like these giants things dragons, uh, dinosaurs, or whatever is going on, what's going on at that time in Atiplano, you know. If you have mm -hmm. a chance to like, visit the, the Lago Titicaca, it's a very mythical place to be. Very special place. I've been there. Um, yes, and all the towns around it are very, very spectacular. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep going. Uh, where was this one? Well, this was, was like uh, another one when I was preparing myself because um, with a curator from uh, Bolivia, Marisa Bolivia Gomez, uh, we have a couple of artists. We, uh, we climb a mountain, like most, like the one that we see it here in the city, it's called Ilgimani. And then like uh, to climb that mountain, it's like very high and you have to prepare yourself. So that was one of my practice. It was like two meters around that mm -hmm. with big rocks. And then like, uh, I mean, maybe you can show the next one. Mm -hmm. So that's at Igimani. So we climbed like it was like 4,400 meters, something like that. And then like uh, we had just two days and then like I, I deal with this pigment with Tuxia, uh, fuchsia. And then like uh, when I went to now in the jungle, what well, that's what the jungle in the in Bolivia, in La Paz here, call it the, um, Los Yungas, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to focus in the green color and then like uh -huh. how I can create like a different types of uh, green greens and based on like the shapes of the rocks, you know, most of these things was like, uh, what's the shape of the color, you know, what's that kind of a thing, it's a very abstract uh, aspect, you know, so uh, just the fact that you have the rocks that come from a very natural thing, like, you know, coming from Pachamama, Mother Earth, so mm -hmm. um, I wanted to kind of peel up this, uh, it was the biggest uh, pacheta and the most challenging, challenging one. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so so yeah the idea was like to build up these like um lines of like um like um 552 uh, rocks uh, that i painted with oil and i put like um yeah just like the third line and it was like just building up it was very hard uh, hard work because like to find the rocks like i'm a i am arachnophobic like i can i can see the spiders so i was very scared oh, gosh. I was working with fear <laughs> and, and but then like the, the the beautiful thing of this construction just like I don't say like I did it myself. We we were a group of people that we were building up these things, you know, like someone that was like bringing the rocks, someone that was helping with the tent, someone was like kind of uh, talking about certain aspects about the area, and that was very you know, interesting to kind of commute to this, uh, this 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 area, you know, like uh, it's just like a friendly reminder, like um, Lao had a coca, coca leaf, the the mm -hmm. millennial one, you know, like the one that everybody talks about. Come, like the Incas were using it, it comes from these areas, you know, from these tropic areas, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. a very delicious one, and you know, the one that is used for like certain other substances, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, yeah, we were like just building up, and I was taking photos every every line that we were doing up. And uh, there was like a moment where we did like um like a a mesa, like a table, where like you have mm -hmm. to you have to put certain like things to to, to put on fire and mm -hmm. uh, to you know, just to give an offer to Pachamama to to a goodwill for the construction for then uh, it cannot fell down or something worse. Uh, and also mm -hmm. that connection is spiritual that like we always deal with in here with this like cosmo cosmogony the like cosmogony andina, no? And so mm -hmm. so in that sense it was like um, it was a challenge one. And then like also I use um a, a specific um, pigment here that's called anielina that you can use that to color the confetti, mm -hmm. and then like yeah, I could like develop different types of of uh, of pigments, you know, from mm -hmm. from. But the base was green, so based on what the green I can need, the green I need the red to create a complement, and then the red uh, to have a variety of like uh, with the purple and then orange and then the yellow and then blah blah blah. And with the context was working in a, in a very beautiful, beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, very beautiful aspect. And it was very interesting because um, uh, the area there in, uh, in Los Jungas, uh, it's a very, I mean, it's a very tropical, so it's raining all the time. And we all know like with the rocks, like the bugs, the insects, uh, they find like home there. So at some point there were like, I saw like, you know, like some ants, doing their things, some bugs are uh, just like, oh, this is my new home. And I, I connect with them. I just, it's very interesting to kind of, uh, that I, I wasn't expecting to, to reach them on that, on that, on that level. No? But, uh, but yeah, and also like the Mamposteria, the piedra to kind of find this, that specific rock that can fit in those spaces, you know? So that was kind of, uh, Absolutely, absolutely. And I wanted to ask you something before continuing to see the images. I wanted to ask you, you know, I know you've been working with confetti, right? With yeah. what in Spanish we call papel picado. Uh, okay. You were working with that before and in parallel you were working with these uh, structures, these stone structures. I mean, um, uh, I, I think it's very interesting. I mean, more than a question is a comment. I think it's very interesting that through that formal comparison and the use of the colors, you are um, relating to elements that are, are completely opposite and different, which is like, you know, super light confetti, which is something that you throw to the air, to rocks, which is something absolutely solid and absolutely um, hard to throw around. But at the same time, you are piling it up. You're like giving it some lightness and at the same time, some structure. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know if you thought about that or how, I mean, how parallel were the two series like related? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I'm gonna keep, um, like... No, no, it's just that I will keep uh, showing images of the process, the chronological process of the creation of the pacheta while you describe this. Cool, cool, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, no, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is rocks, we were finding them like there. That's when I was putting like this, um, um, como un impermeable, impermeable de auto, just to have mm -hmm. the color, they got, have it very intense. And I was mm -hmm. just like uh, painting them like, uh, 
like in different types of colors. It was like starting from the yellow and going back to the yellow and then trying to have like these different types of uh, mm -hmm. colors. You know? That was a very beautiful paleta. Like color schemes, yeah. Paleta <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was like um, purples and red and kind of fuchsia. Like I'm not, I'm not a fuchsia person, but I like fuchsia a lot. And that was the the workshop, like the the tent, the taller. It was like a, some kind of like um, um, uh, cavaleros. And this and this specific one, I would like to kind of stop a little bit uh, about again the coca leaf, you know, like the coca. Like while mm -hmm. I, was, I was I was I was working there, I was like um, a big chart. Big chart is the thing where you 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 put like the coca leaf one by one in your mouth and you keep it here. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's giving you energy. And so then you forget to kind of eat and something else, but gives you energy to just keep working hard. Like the miners in Bolivia, mm -hmm. they did a lot in Peru as well. And so that was a, a thing, a moment where I was kind of thinking of like, you know, just try to kind of find this pigment, this, this, this green from this ancestral like plant. So yeah, that was mm -hmm. kind of the, the following up. And then like, I lay down like canvases and then I stamped uh, the, the, like the like I was painting the rock and I was like mm -hmm. doing a circle in, in this specific canvas just to to uh, record the, the shape of the rock but for now it's like you see it's like shape of, of like forms you know and then like oh, with the core specific ones that uh, that I that I that I used no? and then like they came out mm -hmm. very interesting and that reminds me to la, la burocracia no? the bureaucracy that you always have to stand you know, they, so it's like, bam, mm -hmm. bam, bam. So yeah, that was kind of, I wanted to recreate it with this uh, mm -hmm. kind of Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna keep going with the process, a little bit of what you were just saying. That's, that's another aspect. Yeah, that's another like stamping of the rock. That was another process where I was like, uh, painting from the bottom and then also like stamping the rocks just to record the, the shape with the, within the rocks itself. And then like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like the thing, like I've been, I've been very into the confetti. I mean, here in Bolivia we call it mixtura. So that was very interesting mixtura. to kind of go into the yeah, mixtura. And then like, uh, it's interesting to have like different, different aspects or different ways to how everybody talks about this, 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 this particular thing, you know, this papel picado, no? And so yeah, that was kind of the thing, how we were building up and like how was the, the area. Again, that, there's a moment, I mean, there was one night that a thunder, like really strong, mm -hmm. like I was like sleeping in a, like a cabana and just shake the whole thing, like super So I never felt something that strong. So I believe, like, I don't know if heat, I mean, there were some rocks that were abrupt, but like, they obviously, like, the whole apacheta fell down, so I had to pick it up. Yeah, <laughs> that was interesting, yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that was almost when we were, like, finishing up, we built up, like, um, un andamio, and then I helped, uh, I helped, mm -hmm. helped with Eusebio, Great guy, part of the El Sindicato de los Pocaleros de, de los Yungas. Uh, and then like uh, with him, we were working very closely. And then I was, I, I learned a lot from him, like, and uh, we became very good friends. So yeah, that was the moment we were almost about to finish, you know? And then like in this, this moment was a very special one because um, we, we finished the, um, we finished to put this very big rock on top. And uh, mm -hmm. the next day, uh, uh, two of my uncles died and, and the papacheta mm -hmm. fell down. And I felt uh, very, uh, very down. Like I, I just got something very emotional on that moment. And like right now, I, I met my grandpa, my aunt, and it's a very, it's a very sad moment. So it's just to remind us like we're still having this, this college shit, mm -hmm. you know, this virus thing going on. We have to take care of each other, you know? And uh, I'm yeah, so, so sorry for was, your loss. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was something mm -hmm. very deep. But anyway, like it fell down, and then like uh, the whole of Pacheta fell down, and then uh, I built it up again. I built it up again, and that's how we, that's how it is right now. I, I had a lot of little rocks in there, 
and mm -hmm. the big rock, if you can see on top, like fell mm -hmm. down the floor. So I created like, yeah. idea like a giant, just like the capitol, the bolo, as a lot of. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, no. So I dedicated it to my uncles that uh, in rest mm -hmm. in peace and to have these solid structures that, like you know. We're still here, even if we are not here. So that was something that I kind of absolutely, wanted. absolutely. Yeah. This is a gorgeous view to close up on that. Um, yeah. I also wanted to ask you. I'm gonna make a pause with the images to ask because somebody asked how, how close you feel this is to you know the proposals of land art. I mean, back in the 70s, of course. I mean, a lot of water ran through the river since then, but. Uh, how do you feel you place yourself? I think it's an interesting question in terms of like, you know, the art history of like the involvement with landscape. Um, yeah, I mean, like um, most of like what I was like, um, most of my work that we will we'll discuss like later, like I'd like it always to kind of like, um, kind of have an object and like, change the meaning of the object, adding certain external to that object and then using the external, like the space, like the street, uh, like the kitchen, like not just in the particular area where we all based on like the white cube. Mm -hmm. And then like I was pushing myself to go forward, forward. And then with the Pacheta, I felt like this sort of natural connection, you know, as I was saying, like I was very happy to see a lot of bugs going there. Like in that specific area, there were a lot of um, Aguila. Mm -hmm. uh, eagles. Condors. Eagles. Uh, lots of eagles. Uh, they were hanging out there, and then I assume at some point they're gonna see that thing on rocks, and uh, yeah, they might feel they might gonna go down and chill. And um, I liked that thing a lot, like, uh, to be honest. Like even when we did, I did the apachet in Mujimani, uh, there are a lot of llamas, mm -hmm. and then like of course they are gonna use it, you know. And then eventually, uh, people from the area they will keep building up that thing, you know. So that's mm -hmm. something that is, is is really for me is a very interesting tool attach yourself with the community and like kind of engage as well, you know, on something that uh, everybody can also be part of this, of, of this thing. So yeah, that's kind of my, mm -hmm. I'm going in that direction. And then like, of course, the land art is like a very uh, interesting aspect and how you kind of also like, I'll say not to change the environment, but also how the environment, like, uh, like uh, change the, the, the object itself. And mm -hmm. the I'm getting two very interesting questions. Um, I mean, a comment by Carla, which is burial grounds, obviously. But then let me read you Nicole's question and comment, which I think relates to what Carla is saying. Um, and Nicole is saying, interesting to think that confetti, as well as the idea of the apachepa, remain after a celebration. It's something that remains after someone has passed by a specific spot on a path. So I was wondering how you view both. And she's also extending that and saying, um, hold on. Um, um, process the confetti at, uh, processes the confetti at a pre-COVID time. And how does the apacheta somehow relate to that remaining? And it's a work you develop approaching and during these dark times. Well, I mean, the thing is like, um... I mean, I would say like here, like uh, the confetti, as I was saying, like here in what we call it mixtura. And we use it for many things, not just only celebration, so as everybody uses it as well, you know? Like mm -hmm. uh, when you get married, for example, uh, in Bolivia, uh, they use a white confetti. You know, when you I have know. a, yeah, yeah, it's like on Saturdays, especially. You go in the city center and you will see a lot of white confetti. Oh, someone, someone got married, you know? Like when you, mm -hmm. with a baby born, like yellow, uh, when there is some kind of uh, political parties, they also use that thing, you know, and then like, uh, and it gets some kind of um, also like uh, in certain like uh, a goodwill or like, um, it's not just a, a, a thing of celebration, it's just something more like uh, mystical. So in that sense, like uh, the Apacheta has also that sort of sense, like that mystic, uh, mystic uh, uh, attachment. And then like, uh, well, the Apachetas, that you can find at the plano, they are not going to be painted. They are going to be plain rock itself. It's mm -hmm. just like, uh, it's just it's the work that I'm trying to kind of develop in terms of like my focus of like 
the shape of the color and how I can just deal with it. With this thing of the confetti that I've been doing for so for so for so long time and just kind of wanted to mix with these natural aspects. Yeah, and, and then, I think uh, there's something beautiful and very complementary also, not only in terms of weight, you know, uh, like the physicality of the two objects that they couldn't be more opposite, but also the typical process that you do with them uh, and that you specifically are doing with them is very um it's also very opposite but complementary, which is that the confetti, you disperse it, you know, and the rocks, you are condensing them, you know. You're, I mean, the rocks are like dispersed in the landscape by nature, you know, by the Pachamama, if you want to say, you know, if you want to relate it to the region where you come from. Um, and, and you have this complementary element, which I think is very interesting. Um, but also, I, I, I did wanted to say that I think it's very interesting that um, the interesting thing about this piece, um, like something that definitely is something that has changed throughout history in comparison to land art at the beginning, is that this piece is very clearly engaging with your ethnical identity and with your, you know, cultural identity in in a very specific way. It's equally formal and equally you know, like a site-specific place as, you know, land that has always been, but and you're giving it another, like, turn by, like, like specifically relating it to the experience of the land where you grew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important, um, especially in, you know, 2020. Yeah, no, it's also, like, it's like, um, like, on the other hand, too, as well, like, in things like how... Um, like where the confetti comes from, you know, like uh, when I was in Italy and I was building up is, uh, I build out my, my, I have three machines to produce confetti, by the way. So like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, like I met this uh, poet and he was talking to me, I was saying like, at that time when Italy had a king, you know, there was this uh, joker, you know, Buffon, and then he gave a, like a gift to the king and the king opens and was confetti that fell down. And then everybody <laughs> was like, oh, 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 and that's where it started, you know, it was in carnival, comes from Italy and then like uh, they call it coriander and I was also I was mm -hmm. surprised when I arrived in Italy and I saw the la mixture and like what is this but question uh, coriander is my coriander and I was like for me it was like strong so this kind of a thing of like like I believe that uh, we like reinforce and like give like a like a better meaning to this this particular uh, mm -hmm things like maybe people don't really care anymore. Uh, but here in Bolivia, it's, it's quite, quite, quite important to the presence of that. I know that presence thing is like, um, there is a word uh, that we we say it here in, in La Paz specifically, is estido. Estido means like something that is presence and not like omnipresence. So the fact that I throw you confetti to you, if I throw you confetti right now, for example, and the confetti is gonna touch you and it's gonna fall down on the floor, then you're gonna go, but that confetti is gonna stay there. So you were there, but not anymore. So that aspect yeah. is what I love the most of the confetti. And it's indexical. I, yeah, it, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's to be or not to be. Like uh, we, we, we found the solution, you know? And then like the fact that there's a pachetas, when you, when you are walking in the planet, you find like 10, thousands of them, you know that someone, a group of people built that thing you know so that's omnipresence very 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 uh, very mm -hmm. very interesting and, and like it gives me thinking and keeps keeps me like kind of keep uh, pushing certain other barriers mm -hmm. that i can create certain other things you know on that aspect okay uh so we have another half an hour and i would love to share a little bit of your previous work we have a little retrospective by maxi Oh, no, before I do that, uh, Carla had an excellent question. Carla was, which definitely relates to what we were just discussing. Carla is asking, how is the work you did at the residency in Santa Marta relates to these new works? Since when you work in Bolivia, instead of New York or Europe, you are very site specific, or what do you think? I think you, you kind of answered that with what we were discussing, but... Yeah. I mean, I... Sometimes I like to be in a very uh, vernacular aspect, you know. I like to kind of sort of like uh, put myself on like what kind of things I can find in these like other areas, you know, just not only like in Bolivia or like if I go, if I go in New York or if I go in, uh, in Italy, like 
I also have to put myself like in what kind of things they 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 have or they did uh, before, you know. And that's kind of also like the the aspect as like as an artist to kind of be aware of like what has been done on, uh, in terms of like what you can also be influenced to develop certain other things, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Like for example, like. Uh, um, when I was living there in New York, like I found like the, the throwing of the confetti, it was the same as bouncing the basketball, just like that. The action of throwing confetti is like bouncing the basketball. And just in that aspect, mm -hmm. I just put the, these two together. So for me, it makes sense. And also there was something that I love football, but like uh, there, they don't, don't play that much. So on those, those things like, uh, yes, I engage myself on that. And then like, I also, Put myself or how I how I can respond on, on that on that on that sense. You know? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So let's go see a little bit of your previous work. Um, okay, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, that's that's the um, that's one of my first pieces when I moved to New York. I moved to New York in 2010, and then like uh, was a, hey, as every Latino, hey, I barely was speaking English even now, <laughs> but also like I didn't know people. So for me, it was very tough as everybody else when they moved to New York City. Uh, but I was amazed how uh, pe how many people throw a lot of things from their apartments in the streets, you know, like you can find tables, you can buy TVs, you can find, you can find uh, lots of things. So this skateboard, I found it. And I was living in, in um, um, uh, Abecera, uh, Avenue C, like Lower Side mm -hmm. uh, Avenue. And then very close by this is Tompkins Th Square, where like there were a lot of uh, kids like, you know, skating with skateboard and everything. And I was just that moment, you know, just into the um, surrealist with the Anshin Andalou by Luis Buñuel. And then there's a moment when there's a cloud goes in front of the moon and then mm -hmm. overlaps with a knife cut in the eye. So I saw like the cloud was going one direction as the skateboard. Like the skateboard only goes one direction, like you cannot, it's just one direction. So then I, I cover the skateboard with the cotton and then like I sort of recreate this sort of cloud thing, you know, that you can, you can, you can, uh, I still have that piece though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so Let's yeah. Go that to part the was next one. Thank you. This was a um, piece where like uh, I was doing like certain like, on that, on that, um, on that aspect of working. Well, I got very influential by uh, Gabriel Orozco, like I, which I really enjoy his work. And then I, man, I happened to meet him also as well. And then like seeing his work as well. And then like uh, this, this piece is what I was doing. It was like uh, creating this, this change of meaning of the object. And then I was placing them in the street or some areas and I was leaving them just there. And just the only, uh, the only thing I was doing was just taking a photo and that's it. Some of the some of those pieces uh, last like few days, some others weeks, some others still like like I found like two or three that I oh, I did this thing and then you can still find them but like uh, but yeah that's 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 kind of a, yeah the idea was like uh, you, you know you walk you know on art the art mm -hmm. you know, becomes your your shoes. I so love it. <laughs> So, yeah, Here we have the same confetti. Yeah, this, was my, this is my very first piece that I did in confetti because I was very nostalgic oh, nice. of living abroad. And then like this confetti I did it myself, like with a with a what's it, perforador. <laughs> I didn't have a machine. And uh, yeah, it took me like uh, like like two months kind of that. It took it's a lot of confetti. And uh, yeah, as I was I was I was mentioning before, like you know, this aspect of the action of bouncing the ball was exactly the same as throwing the confetti. So that was kind of the thing. And, and of course the context of the background to deal with, that's also when I started to kind of deal with the, with the, mm -hmm. not just the object itself, but also the context as like how they can relate to each other. You know, and maybe you can understand. Well, this was a, it's a very old piece. It took me two years to get funds. <laughs> and mm -hmm. just one more to build up. Um, I was actually graduating from school and then like I got the, um, the award, like the CDR Memorial Award, where I could like fund this, uh, this piece. It was like, yeah, there are actually two books back in Beatles from 1972 and 1974. And the idea was simple. I was imagining how two cars have sex, 
So mm-hmm. that was my, my, my perception. But then I did a research. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a car man. Like, I don't like cars. Uh, but on this, I had to do the research. And like, that, that car was designed during the Nazi Germany, Bernard Porsche, designed this Volkswagen, people's car. And then after mm-hmm. the war, like they sell this car, it was so cheap to build, and they built, they brought the the industry to America, and somehow in Mexico it was a boom, like a cultural boom, and then like uh, today we can say like every Latino like family at least one has a, like the uncle or the cousin. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like in, in, in Bolivia we we call it peta. I don't know how you call it in Argentina. Uh, we call it escarabajo. Like the Beatle yeah. language is yeah. uh, uh, born in literal translation. I like it better more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but, that, that, but the fact that like they were having sex, it was like one mm-hmm. Latino and one German. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool great. To have this. <laughs> and it fits like a long tradition of works with the Beatles uh, in yeah. like contemporary art, which is a, a, a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Well, this one is like I was doing the residency at ICP in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and then I was kind of trying to move forward to do certain like performance things through games, and then like I was uh, kind of designing games with the, through the object, like specifically with the ball, as the basketball with confetti. But this one, I was like, you know, American football, you know, you watch it all the time in USA. Like, I didn't understand, I didn't understand before. Now I love it, uh, but just the fact of throwing the ball from one side to another, uh, it's just like a parable direction, you know, like after the rain, you know, after the tempest mm-hmm. comes the rainbow. And then when these players pass the ball, they go forward, it's a touchdown. So it's also like a sort of rainbow, you know, and the form is a rainbow. So yeah, I have, I made three of these balls and I play sometimes with myself, you know, let's make some rainbows, you know. <laughs> That's beautiful. Think, yeah. That's beautiful. And also it adds um, a layer of, queer poetic to a super male-infused game, right? There's something yeah. also interesting there. And I mean, sports has been a part of your work for a long time. Let's go to this world, which I know and I adore. I don't know if you want to tell the story of this one. This is a very long story, but before that, I just want to answer to Carla. Uh, the ah, bill yes, that, like, because I don't own anything in, in New York, like, you know, you have to pay for every fucking space. And uh, um, I was moving the cars everywhere. And then at some point, I couldn't find any funding, any place that I could place it. El Museo del Barrio, they helped me to kind of show that piece. But it was very expensive to sustain the piece. So I sent the, the piece to, you know, they get destroyed in East Brooklyn, you know, and get some cash back mm. because it was a very heavy, heavy, heavy piece. But the funny part is, like, the people from the this the no the the Australian metal for bendes for metal and they kept the piece so it's actually that piece is my first uh, site specific in New York City but it's in um I don't remember the station but it's it's it's, it's Brooklyn it's a little bit dangerous to go along you know just just go just go chill but so you I was still it. there they didn't destroy it they kept kept it they like kept. That. Yeah, they kept it. I mean, su- I mean, they're supposed to destroy it, but they said, like, no, we cannot destroy it. So, and it's, like, in the entrance. So, it's, I think they use it, like, a sort of logo, you know, like, it's like, oh, let's, let's go to the double beetle. You That's know? So, beautiful. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. And it's also, I mean, <laughs> that was, no, that, and you know, that was like... you know what, Maxi, there's something very beautiful. I'm glad. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Uh, because it's really beautiful, the response. I think you, you, you need to tell this all the time because it also talks about uh, a situation in which people which are not part of the contemporary art world or discourse uh, found, you know, like decided to keep contemporary art, you know? Uh, I think it's even, I mean, Carla is saying, why not donate it to El Museo? And I have to well, say, Carla- I try. I try, I try, but the thing is yeah. like, uh, they needed to pay the rent of the space they need to yeah. fix a lot of things. And then like, uh, that time was uh, no. Rocio I may have said something. Alvarado. Yeah. On a personal opinion, I mean, I mean, it would be great if it was in any institution. It's even more beautiful and significant and revolutionary that is owned by the same people that were supposed to destroy it. People who do not take part in the circuits of the art world, you know, and they saw the aesthetic act that you did there, you know. And, you know, and they found a way to, 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, no, that's anyway, okay. it's gorgeous. So let's talk about this one now. Well, this one, it was like, uh, yeah, I was doing like, I was doing with football, uh, but then there was very interested, like, um, um, exhibition that happened at American Society by, uh, uh, no, Jorge Luis Borges and Sol Solar, like uh, the art of friendship by Gabriela Armangel. And then like she was talking about like, you know, how, how great was, I mean, you have a chance to, you know, better than me probably. So so I was, you know, like understanding kind of thinking besides the work. But it was in the piece of Panajedrez. And mm -hmm. when they asked him how this thing came, came from, I said like, I was trying to change the rules of game. And then like he comments about like, what if instead of numbers, we have uh, letters. So then, well, people play, we read. And then uh, I, I went to Buenos Aires and they invited me to a you know, gallery there to do that. And then we did a game with 27 letters in Chacarita. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, this, is, this is the work of the photographer. Like I told her, like, just take photos and uh, words will appear. And this is my favorite because it's like foul. I mean, foul, you don't write like that, but just you read it like that, like foul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and it was like a very, we, we did like a match of 13 versus 13, like from A mm -hmm. to M, N to Z, and I was Enya as the referee. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun, it was fun, it was a lot of fun. I still have those jerseys. I mean, I brought it here because- I It's amazing. Should, should yeah. describe it to the audience, basically what he did is he invited, like, so basically he did. So it's 27 people because you have a referee, so you had two teams of 12 people each? No, a little bit more. It's, 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 it's 27 letters, so it's like 13 one side and 13 the other side. And the only distinction ah. was the socks. So, like, the A to M was the, like, socks up, and the N to Z, socks down. And that's and then, how you see the team. That's it. The jerseys, we did it in, in uh, 13, 11, in, in the center of one side, like, whatever you feel, mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. like... Uh, and then, it's the uh, neighborhood yeah. where you, it's like our fashion district of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of words. I mean, uh, a lot of photos of this, you know, so that was mm -hmm. uh, my favorite, yeah. Um, but basically, so just to explain it to people step by step, so players were playing a jersey assigned with X letter. Uh, both teams had the same color and letters, but it, and, and they would be distinguished the two teams by socks. And he just invited this group of people to play a soccer match. And um, Maxi was playing inside also. What was your letter, Maxi? Do you remember? Enye. Enye, of course, you chose the best one. Um, and then he uh, like just played a game and had a photographer take photos. And a lot of like gorgeous like uh, war situations came up from it. Um, you know, it's a photo performance. It talks about soccer. It's like culturally specific, but at the same time, there's nothing more universal than soccer. And it's about poetry. It's about concrete poetry. It's a beautiful, beautiful project. Anyway, so I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. What about yeah. this one? This piece is like when I just moved to Italy, like I uh, moved to Torino. And then I was like kind of getting into the whole things. And then of course, Arte Povera was born in there. So mm -hmm. I was kind of doing my, my Arte Povera post, <laughs> uh, dealing with the wine and the knife cutting the bread, you know? So it's just the reflection of the mirror. So I made a lot of little pieces like this. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was, what I was doing. I think <laughs> I'm, you post some of these always on Instagram and I think it's, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, you I, have, I well, but you always have such an, you know, such a, um, how to say it, such a quirk eye, you know, everything is kind of like uh, vivo y curioso, and you have a view of the world and of everyday objects that is always finding, you know, the formal reference, yeah. the shock, the lack of purpose, um, anyway, um, I'm gonna keep talking, Carla. We're, I'm gonna ask Maxi about that project in a second, about the performance recall. I'm gonna look for an image while he describes. I mean, this is another of the confetti pieces. Maybe I 
Ah, yeah, so when I did the residency at Crypto GT Quattro GT, and this is when I designed my first machine as confetti, and I produced there like 400 mm -hmm. kilograms. And that's the moment when I saw a mountain, and then like mm -hmm. refer that sort of idea of like back in time when the when they arrived to America and they found these mountains filled of silver and gold, and they just took it all, mm -hmm. you know, everything, and then like and that was sort of the the sense, you know, because like if you think about it, like the bill, like like a hundred dollars, like 10 euros or 10 bolivianos. It's a paper. It's a paper mm -hmm. cut through a machine that the government gives a value to that. Like the, like the confetti, like <laughs> that sort of exactly. idea. You know, like we give the value, of course. I mean, monetary, of, we are in a capitalist world. Like, I mean, we, we try to kind of be attached ourselves because back we were, we weren't using money. We were using exchange, you know, like I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you this, you're gonna give me like a table, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a pencil, you're gonna give me a book, certainly. That's kind of sort of the way back, maybe a little bit, some things were a little bit. What about this one? That, and that was like in the Museo Nacional de Arte in La Paz. Uh, I was very excited to, you know, be part of this, like, you know, local museum, the main one, and I was very into it. And I, I told myself, like, just do the Suma Porco. Suma Porco is the Cerro Rico de Potosí. When they said like mm -hmm. that was the biggest mountain with silver and, 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 and gold. they were saying stories that they, they could make a bridge from there in Potosí to all the way to Spain. And that was 6,000 kilograms of, of, of confetti. A lot of mm -hmm. confetti. Like that carnival, I'm pretty sure like no one, like uh, everybody had like confetti for sure, like for sure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then that few shots, just like came out, you know, with this amount of colors. So like, it's not very, very, very into on that yeah, context stuff like that. I do want to make sure uh, that everybody has a chance to check uh, Maxi's Instagram. I'm looking Maxi to try to share with everybody um, the photo of your rooftop performance at Y Gallery. I'm scrolling down, but I do want to mention to people that if you scroll down his Instagram, Feed, you're gonna see like you know dozens of these beautiful works with everyday objects that we just comment and you know and all the variations of his work with confetti um but oh well okay let's comment the next project meanwhile because this is a little bit different and then this was like uh last year it was like a sort of like one of my i mean i don't say like political but like in 2018 now, uh, 19 now, uh, we had elections and then like the election was like, a, mm -hmm. well, there were two stories, like there was a coup mm -hmm. and there was a fraud election. But anyway, mm -hmm. the country was like a mess. But the disturbing thing was like the fact that the Bible was coming inside the government as a shield. Like, you know, we have to, we have to, we have to protect God, the Christ and everything. And that was a very, that image was for me very disturbing. You know, there was this story when like Pizarro arrived to Cajamarca and shows the Bible to, mm -hmm. to Atahualpa. And Atahualpa, you know, gets the Bible, you know, tries to hear, doesn't understand, throws it on the floor and then say, yo, no, you cannot. They capture him and then they saw they have a lot of gold and the whole con uh, like conquista arrived, you know. So like this, this cross, mm -hmm. I made it with gum, with a lot mm -hmm. of gum. And then there was the idea of like la palabra de Dios, no? Like, like the, the palabra comes from your, from your mouth. Of course, we talk with the mouth. And then mm -hmm. I invite people to chew gums and then just stick on the, on the cross. <laughs> After a few days, uh, mm -hmm. it was like lots of bugs, mosquitoes. The cross fell down, mm. it was disgusting, and it was kind of the and the aspect that I was like kind of trying to, to show, you know, is I mean, we I, I do respect everybody that has certain beliefs, but like, um, that was very, um, um not 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 all right at that moment. I mean, right now it's like we're trying to get back, but we have the COVID thing situation, so we still, but that moment was like something. And, and I did this in Kiosco in Santa Cruz, is mm -hmm. our contemporary art home for all the contemporary Bolivian artists. So if you have a chance mm -hmm. to do a residency, I highly recommend it. It's like a very, very... I love that work. 
I would love to go see the show. Um, but anyway, okay. And now I'm still looking. I mean, maybe you want to describe it, or if you give me a clue, I'll try to search it. What was the name of the performance ritual that you did at the roof of White Gallery? Well, the thing like at that time, when I was on, um, what was like on Canal Street? No, the name say. Well, they had like the, it was on uh, the, like lower the workshop. Side. Remember, mm -hmm. like the workshop, you know, like everything. Mm -hmm. And then, like, um, I was talking with Cecilia, you know, and then I was telling her, like, you know, I have this song, La Diablada, that uh, you know, I play violin, that I can play in the roof. as like kind of sort of like a protest thing, like, going on, because, like, there was a situation where, like, you know, the, the last administration was, was, was being very mean to Latinos specifically. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, yeah, yeah. So the song was like, you know, La Diablada is like, da 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 Okay, so I played that song two hours, but here's the thing. The moment when I was playing and people came and they know, that's what Khaled's asking, there was a big storm in New York with thunders. Like, I'm not joking. Like with thunders, my violin got wet. And we were keep, we were drinking. We were like carnival, and I was I, I was my very first time that I saw that that type of thunders, and I was mm -hmm. kind of sort of like a call, you know, to all all of us, you know, like we Latinos in New York at that time was everybody was a little scared to go Queens, you know, to take the seven train because you know ice was around the corner. I with my friend uh, Daniel Siles, he was the drummer. It's a profe, saludos. And then, like with him, we we did this uh, duetto, and then like uh, that was that was very that was very weird, like to have that like thunder mm -hmm. storm. And I was very happy with Cecilia because I think after that, like they moved the white area, and it's, oh, I don't know what's going on. But uh, well, Carla came there, and I was very very happy with with, with her. It's like a very it's very help. She helped me a lot mm -hmm. of things in my career, and I always grateful to have met her and like listening to her all the time so yeah that's that was very, that was very funny thing. so i mean we can mention very briefly we have like four more minutes if anybody has any questions please feel free to ask and thank you carla for reminding us of that spectacular um and, and carla saying your repetitious violin tune invoked the rainstorm <laughs> yeah it was really like thunder i'm not joking like and I was da, 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 da. and I was like, and actually I just became like a, a gringo, so I was kind of That's also, I, I got like pamphleto to do your immigration <laughs> things on the table, so you know, the 100 questions that you have to know and blah, blah, uh, yeah, because it was very weird situation, and you know, it's like, uh, yeah. it, was, it was strange, it was strange, but now it's like new, new mayors. <laughs> So in the few minutes we have left, let's briefly mention, but talk a little bit about this space. I mean, you mentioned it at the beginning, but the importance for you of creating these uh, art spaces. Uh, well, the photo you chose, I feel a little more embarrassed because it's the show you invited me to curate a few years ago. Mm, we worked by Nani Lamarque and Veronica Madanes, and the show was called Buenos Aires, and it was like invoking the clouds of Buenos Aires into the underground space of, uh, 67 loot low, but let's talk a little bit about the space because I think it was an important place of gathering and experimentation for many of you. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Gogo Graham, like um, like a friend of, like, uh, well, we were like, well, at some point with uh, Kim Jong Sung, a very good friend of mine, artist, uh, he did Bart. Uh, and then, like, we were just kind of trying to, you know, do things by ourselves, like, and then we found this, like, space in the basement, the lower side, you know, we, we were, well, based on the price, we were paying kind of nothing, and then we just kind of wanted to fix and then invite artists, curators to do things there, and just to get in touch with everybody, you know, to kind of sort of gen generate, like, a sort of a community where we all kind of get in touch and, like, talk and see, and then, like, and the space, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was a janitor there. <laughs> I was like, uh, I love that place a lot. I miss that place right now. It's a laundry service right now, by the way. <laughs> and, and then, uh, but like some people were, that were coming, especially Carla, they were saying that it's like kind of sort of like the New York 
um, uh, view that was back in time, you know, in the New York that we all call that Doug Rodriguez, very good friend of mine and an outstanding sculptor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like that was the, the kind of thing, you know, that wasn't you know, just all the time like the white cube basis. It was just like kind of as how it is. And it was very funny when Con Edison was coming to check, you know, to read and they were saying, yo, this is the most the cleanest uh, basement <laughs> you are inside. <laughs> And then, like, yeah, uh, Buenos Aires was great. It was great. There was a lot of air. Like, those bus was nice and, like, nanny. And, yeah, you know, it was, was fun. was fun. It was, it was a fun. beautiful place. Um, but, Maxi, we have only a few minutes left. And I want to ask you, I mean, what do you have, uh, you know, cooking up for the future? I mean, you're going to go back uh, to your studies in Germany. Mm. What else? Uh, what else? Are you planning to do? Do you have any projects? Are you planning to keep working on the pachetas or? Well, right now I'm like uh, I'm trying to bring coca leaf to Europe. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. it's a little bit challenging, but I got like a I got like a permit from mm -hmm. from Frankfurt. So I need to go like tomorrow or like Monday to the Ministry mm -hmm. of Culture just to validate. And uh, well, I mean the thing is like. Uh, it's just kind of weird, like to produce cocaine, you need a lot of, a big amount of coca leaf. I mean, with a kilogram, you can't, you can't. it's just like, and it's like, um, it's a great plan. Uh, for me, it's like, I think uh, because of that, maybe I didn't get COVID. I mean, here in Bolivia as well, in La Paz, it's COVID, it's very, it's very strong. It's, everybody's getting sick and everything, so. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do with bureaucracy and then like, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Otherwise, I'll be in jail. <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure that you'll get the proper permits and keep experimenting with that. And um, let's close with this. Yeah, Nicole is in, invoking a beautiful project that you did along with Manuela Viragasso, which was called America with a K. And, you know, um, it is true that it was a very special show and it happened right at the time of the previous year's elections and um, you know it was so timely and so profound and anyway i do want to highlight for those of us who were lucky enough to be part of the new york art community you know or being part of an art community when you're around maxi your presence is really unique and it's really vibrant and it's really motivating for all of us so thank you for that and thank you for your art and thank you for your everyday art on Instagram, which I personally adore. I mean, sometimes when I'm bored, I just go there to see what you have. Um, and I invite everybody to do that and to keep his updates on his Instagram. And thank you so much, Maxi, for for talking to us. No, thank you. Thank you, Nicole and but, uh, Carla and everybody. Yeah, Carla as well. Carla, you know that... Uh, I love you a lot. And then, like, well, just to say hi to, well, Yomar, Marisabel, mi padrino, abuelo, querido, te quiero mucho, Eduardo y Alejandro de Arte Bolivia, y, y mi querido Tomaso Inti, con mucho cariño. Thank you, Maxi. Thank you so much. Many hugs. Bye-bye.